too nice with this. With this. Ain't no way that I'm going outside. My pockets been heavy as shit. Still. What's poppin', M2T? It's your boy Run on the channel to be. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe button whenever you pull up to the channel. And while you at it, hit that post notification button for your boy so whenever I drop, you can hop up in the truck and roll with me. See what's popping. How's it going, fam? Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Hope you got you some rest. Got a chance to chill with the fam. And I hope everything went smooth for us all. Back to it again. Another week. Today, I have a really good story for you guys today. And y'all already know, without any further ado, we're going to get right into it. As a trucker, there's a few things that we have to always be aware of. And I think one of the most important things is our pre-trip. But there are some things that a pre-trip can't even avoid. And that's brake failure. I think as me, this is just my opinion personally, that's one of my biggest fears for my brakes to end up failing. Especially when I'm on the interstate. We all do remember the time in Colorado when the Houston, Texas driver was going down that bridge and he ended up missing the runaway the runaway ramp and end up driving into a city going 70, 80 miles an hour with no brakes. <sighs> Crashing in all them people. We saw the outcome of that. We have another incident that's very similar to that that I'm about to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys video now. When I show you this video, you have to be mindful that this is YouTube. So they're not going to let me play the audio of it because you got people screaming. You got people hollering. You got all kind of things that's going on in the process of this truck driver trying to control this truck. But I'm about to show you a very crucial video. And I want you guys to check this out. That was crucial. And my prayers goes out to all of those families and everybody that was involved in that. Y'all see how that truck was moving? I mean, he was going, he was flying down the sidewalk doing 78. I'm talking about, he trying to control that boy. This broad daylight. People just going by their merry way, you know? People just minding their own business, y'all. Little do they know, it is a truck that is a runaway and is he's heading straight for him. I'm trying to imagine what he was thinking when he was going through that. I already know I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm, I'm 70, 80 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? My brakes is out. You know, 80% of my brakes is gone. I'm out of there. All I can do is try to control this thing. You hear me? I can just try to control this thing and, and, and try to dodge as many innocent cars and people out there that I possibly can. But how can you do that? And this is not the only thing. I'm in a residential area. I mean, it's people everywhere moving everywhere. Thank God with nobody on the sidewalk. I mean, flying through four-way intersections and red lights, cars doing this and doing this, and you coming, you flying through that stuff. I mean, and as y'all can see, you know, some of them got hit, you know what I'm saying? Some of them got hit, you know? You know, thank God wasn't nobody hurt, wasn't nobody, you know, didn't, wasn't nobody deceased in this situation. Thank God for that, because I just knew it. You know, and then when it end up, you know, crashing out and everything, catching fire and everything, it caught fire at a, at a dealership. Looked like a Ford dealership or some kind of dealership. 
Flames everywhere. Thank God, truck driver made it out, but 12, 13 people got injured, one crew, one critical. And I'm like, that wasn't nothing but God because that truck was moving. I just knew somebody, especially the truck driver, I knew he was out of there. Matter of fact, I just want to show y'all this real brief clip, this real brief update of what they were saying about this situation, this real brief report. Around 1.30 p.m. on November the 3rd, 2023, a truck pulling two loaded gravel trailers experienced brake failure while traveling in Thule. The runaway gravel truck went through several cities' intersections, striking five vehicles and then crashing into dozens of cars at the Thule Motor Company in the area of 1000 North and Main Street, sparking a large structure fire. 11 people were injured, including one person who was airlifted to a hospital. Truck driver Moab James Stapley was, ch was charged over the summer with reckless driving, brake violations, running red lights, and driving on the wrong side of the road. A post-crash investigation revealed 80% of its trailer brake system was not functioning co correctly. Those, those are not no DOT violations. Why wasn't he charged any DOT violations? Now, I'm just guessing, I'm thinking, maybe it was because he was in the city limits and not on no interstates or no highways. You know, is that the only time DOT can charge you with violations? You know, or the only time that you can get DOT violations? Get in the comments and let me know that. I mean, but it seemed like it was some very minor fines that he got charged with. Who fault is it whenever you in a situation like that? I mean, do we, is it our fault when our brakes default? Is that is that preventable? How can you how can you even know? You know what I mean? I know you get out, you do your pre-trip, you can look at your brake pads and see if your brake pads, you know, thick or small. I don't even really know the numbers to that. I just know they need to be thick. Is the brake line, is any fluid or anything coming out of that? I mean, that's kind of like pre-trip stuff. Like that's you can see that. But you really, in my opinion, ain't gonna know until you get behind that truck and Whoop, it go out. So, when it comes to being on that interstate and you in a situation like that, runaway ramps, this is especially to all the new truck drivers out there, especially to all the, the, the new ones and uh, uh, the ones that haven't been in long or even the ones that's thinking about it. I've never had to use a runaway truck drive, uh, runaway ramp, and I've been driving almost 10 years, right at 10 years. Which one of y'all have had to use a runaway ramp? I, I don't even know nobody that had to use a runaway ramp. But I want to show y'all a clip of this runaway ramp real quick. Check this out. The crash has a lot of people wondering, though, about runaway truck ramps. One day after the crash, a man caught video of a truck using one of those runaway ramps further up I-70. Our Steve Staker set out to learn how often those ramps are used, and he learned quite a bit about what happens after a truck makes that choice. Yeah, as I came out of uh, Eisenhower Tunnel, I saw his the, the truck's brakes were smoking pretty bad. Jesse Terrell says this scene was even more frightening after what he saw on the news a day earlier. Wow, I really hope that <laughs> nothing bad happens. And then that truck made the right move. Kudos to that guy because he did a great job of maintaining control. He used the runaway truck ramp. 30 years of living here in Colorado, I've never seen one used. It's tough to nail down a number of just how often trucks use these ramps. Carver owns Big Steve Towing in Gypsum and is part of a rotation with CSP to help get these trucks off the ramps. An average on just getting one that goes and hits a runaway ramp, normally you can look at a approximately four hours. You're probably going to look in the neighborhood maybe of uh, $2,500. Big Steve says the cost goes up if the wreck is bigger. We have had them go up the ramp and out the top and roll over. CDOT built 14 of these runaway truck ramps in the state, and today they could only tell us the data for one of them. This ramp near Mount Vernon, the one the trucker in last week's crash is accused of passing. CDOT says nine trucks have used that ramp since 2016. Big Steve says it's a problem that could be avoided if truckers just got to know the terrain a bit better. And once they get going too fast and get their brakes hot, there's no stopping them. 
as y'all can see the guy was kind of explaining some stuff about the runaway ramp so when it comes to the runaway ramp it is it's designed specifically for trucks who brake system goes out and they tell you when you get to the top of that mountain or that hill before you go down it's a sign that's a lot of times be sitting either a sign or a flashing or something that tells you that gives you some kind of warning about of that hill and they tell you stop and check your brakes it tells you that i mean that's why i got to have a i got to have a man i got to have a, a manual man i got to have a stick i gotta be able to to control the truck you know i got to have control of that truck with the automatics i've only drove an automatic a couple of times and i gotta tell you my personal opinion i don't like them you know what i mean they are you know i don't know i ain't hating on nobody that do you know get your money do your thing man but i was trained with a manual with a stick and a 10 ship and that's just that's just what i'm accustomed to i feel like i can control the truck more on my own with that you know to each his own you know but i don't feel like i feel like the automatics is very electronically controlled you know and electronic systems always fail i feel like with a stick with a manual you can control it more on your own you know but i feel like the automatic trucks i don't even think you know i i know they probably got a system built in it where you know it'll 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 grab hold and control of the truck but i know with these with these manuals with these sticks all you got to do is hit that j-brake you hit that J-brake, you can go into a lower gear. You got a few options you can do to control that truck from, from being a runaway. And the last option, of course, if you're on the interstate and none of that works, you just hit the runaway. You know, but when it comes to that runaway ramp, you always want to be aware of that. You know what I mean? You don't never want to get too comfortable in these trucks where you're not aware of when you're going down them hills, you know, you know what, what what kind of safety measures do i need to make sure that i'm on top of before i get to going down this hill i'm automatically going down that bar probably in about third or fourth girl just depending on how how, how deep of an incline it is right so a, a decline i'm sorry i keep saying incline i mean a decline y'all when them brakes go out who fault is it you know does that affect your license you know is it on a company is it on who is it on you know what I mean? So when you when you be mindful of those runaway ramps, when you in Colorado, when you in Utah, when you in all these cities, I know on the far west, it's a lot of mountains and stuff. In the northwest, it's a lot of mountains and stuff, you know, but I operate in the Midwest, you know, mid and a little bit of the Mideast, no farther than Ohio. You know what I mean? I'm really not going to no deep tearing mountains when I, as I'm, as I'm operating and working and stuff, but I know a lot of y'all do, and I know a lot of y'all like the man. So get in the comments and let me know, you know, what's, what's popping with these runaway ramps and get in there and let the, the young drivers know that the ones that's thinking about being a truck driver, let them know when they come to the runaway ramps. But when you in them cities like that and you go out of control, man, it's, it, it ain't no runaway ramps in those cities. You know, all of that stuff is on the interstates, you know, in a in a deep in the deep of the mountains. Ain't none of that stuff in those cities. So your brakes go out and you flying in them cities, man, did you in a whole nother situation. You know, now you got civilians really around you. On the interstate, you know, if I'm if I fall off of the bridge or I fall off the cliff, then I'm on that's on me. You know what I'm saying? Lord, forgive me for my sins. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm out of there. <laughs> you know, but when you got other people around you, like man, you know what I'm saying? That's crucial. As truck drivers, we have to be mindful of us operating these trucks and what's going on with these trucks at all times, point blank. You know, it's more than just hopping up in a truck, you know, and making making the money. It's way more to it than that, man. These are some of the, these are the most dangerous vehicles on the highways and interstates, 18 wheelers. So know your stuff, man. Know what you're getting involved with before you get involved with it. You know what I mean? Do your research. You know, um, I just hate that that had to happen to them people. I just wanted to run this video across y'all real quick. Get in the comments and let me know what you think about it. I appreciate y'all. Big shout out to my A1 Day Ones. Big shout out to the ones that just be glancing in to see what's popping. And a special shout out to all the new subscribers. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support, fam. All right. And y'all already know. Until next time, 
It's your boy. I just got in a whole brand new bag. I'm running around. Hey, jewelry moving like juice. I cannot go to the Look, I just leveled up. I thank God. Straight from the mud. Now it's time to get the pie. Sweat in the blood. You can see it in my eyes. My future turning up. What it's time to be alive. I'm that nigga. I don't mean a brand. But I'm